Hey guys, back again with another review on The Last Guardian for PS4. And I just did a review on Final Fantasy XV, and it shares actually a, a decent amount in common with The Last Guardian. Uh, both of these games have been in the making for like 10 plus years, and it, they came out around the exact same time, which is pretty funny. Now, The Last Guardian, uh, I, I what to say about it? Uh, yeah, uh, the director, Fumito Ueda, uh, his previous games were Ico and Shadow of the Colossus. And Shadow of the Colossus is generally considered like a masterpiece, like one of the greatest games ever made. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't really played too much of it. I played maybe an hour of it, and the controls kind of drove me a little crazy. Uh, and I kind of put it down, and I regret doing that. I do want to go back to it, especially now that I've finished this game. Uh, but Ico is a game I've actually hated. Uh, I played it uh, not too long ago on the Shadow of the Colossus collection. I made it maybe halfway through and I just gave up. Uh, that game, like, I really hated the controls. Uh, the puzzles I thought were, were really dull. The platforming was annoying. Uh, like, it was basically a giant escort mission, which I hated. Uh, and the combat in that game is dreadful. Like, some of the worst combat. Uh, and you're kind of forced to do it in a lot of situations. Uh, so yeah, that game, I appreciated what it was trying to do and what it was going for, but it just didn't work for me. Uh, so The Last Guardian, I'm kind of surprised I even wanted the game in the first place, uh, because I hated Ico, and The Last Guardian uh, kind of is similar to it in, in some ways, uh, where you know you kind of play as a young uh, boy and you're kind of guiding around uh, another character, although this time it's like this uh, beast. Uh, and it's named uh, uh, Trico in the game. And so the gameplay is kind of similar to Ico. It's basically kind of like a slow-paced uh, puzzle platformer, basically, uh, where you're kind of exploring like these, uh, I, I don't want to say ruins, uh, but they're kind of, it's kind of basically like this valley, uh, which has like a bunch of like different uh, structures to it. Uh, and it's actually really cool from like an art direction standpoint, although the variety, there's not too much environment variety because the game does play place in one location uh, for the entirety of it, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, it's it's very similar to Ico in, in a lot of ways, especially gameplay. So I was expecting to hate this game. I really was. And to my surprise, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I gotta say, this game kind of surprised me. Now, it's not perfect. Uh, there are a lot of things that uh, actually do bug me about it. Uh, it's also not the type of game I could play for extended hours. Uh, basically, whenever I sat down to play this game, I could only handle a few hours at a time. Uh, but this game had a profound emotional impact on me, uh, especially in the last like 25% of the game, where it just becomes actually kind of amazing uh, in a lot of ways. Unfortunately, it's also a game I can't really I, I can't really talk about too much in depth because it would spoil a lot of what makes it special. Uh, like I can't talk about the ending whatsoever, basically. Uh, but yeah, I, I was kind of surprised by this game. Whereas Final Fantasy XV, I thought it was going to be amazing and it was turned out to be disappointing. This game, I had no expectations for, uh, and I was kind of surprised. Now, the reaction to this game, though, has been kind of interesting. Uh, it's gotten pretty good reviews. Uh, I think it's like sitting at like an 83 on Metacritic or something like that. And there's a few people that, uh, like call it like kind of like a masterpiece, but, uh, from what I've seen, a lot of people actually consider it to be his weakest game uh, of the three, and I've heard a lot of people that just don't like this game. Uh, they just flat out don't like it. And a lot of the reasons people are giving are pretty sound. Like, I can understand why someone wouldn't like this game. And ordinarily, it's not the type of game I like. Like, kind of simplistic puzzle platformers, like, they're just not my type of game. But this game just worked for me on, on a few different levels. And we'll, we'll get to that later, but uh, I think we should start out with, with a story for The Last Guardian. Uh, basically, you, you start out, you're like this young boy, you kind of wake up in this, like, uh, part of this valley, uh, and there's this chained up beast there, sitting with you, and you're kind of unsure why you're there, and the game kind of opens with narration, so, uh, you're, you're getting narration from, from the boy as an older, a, a man. So, this kind of spoils, uh, some of the story a little bit. Uh, but I honestly kind of liked the narration. I thought it actually worked fairly well, uh, and I, I thought it was actually pretty well done. Uh, I wondered why they went with that decision. There probably would be more mystery to the game, like to the world, uh, just like ha what happens and what ends up happening to this boy uh, if there wasn't narration, but I did actually like it in the game. It's not something that I, I, I found to be an issue or anything like that. 
But anyways, uh, you find this beast basically chained up, and you end up uh, ch taking off his chains and like this uh, mask that he has on. Or does he have? He might not have a one, uh, mask on, but when you f first find him. But uh, basically, you you kind of rescue him from uh, from this like uh, chain that he's 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 chained up to, uh, and you basically s start to try to figure out how to get out of this place you're in, uh, this very mysterious uh, area that you're in with all the, these like ancient looking structures uh eventually you'll come across also like these uh these like soldiers uh that kind of like uh get reanimated basically and they start chasing after you and try to like pull you into like these doors uh and whenever you die you have to like mash uh buttons uh to basically like all these symbols come up and you have to like mash buttons and then you come back to life uh if these soldiers uh, actually end up grabbing you uh you have to like uh, mash of buttons uh, to get out of their, their reach. Uh, there's a bunch of different like uh, weird things that happen throughout the game where you're not sure what it all means. Uh, you're not you know you're not sure why these soldiers are in this valley. Uh, you're not sure what this beast is uh, that's kind of ends up following you. And the whole game, obviously, like kind of the point of it is is this bond that kind of develops between the boy and the beast uh, as as you explore like this valley and, and try to escape. Uh, that's kind of like the main hook of the game, uh, the main like kind of theme, if you will. Uh, but there's actually uh, an interesting world here uh, that you kind of discover, uh, you know, bits and pieces about it as as the game uh, progresses. It reminds me of uh, Dark Souls in a, in, a, in some ways. Now, I think there's like more cutscenes in this game uh, to kind of explain uh, different things, but it kind of reminded me of Dark Souls with its storytelling, where it's very slow and kind of like. Uh, is drip fed to you basically. Uh, it's not a surprise to me because uh, Miyazaki, the director of, uh, the, of the Dark Souls games, his favorite game of all time is, is Ico, and that's what got him into game development in the first place. So it's actually not that surprising to me. But uh, the world is definitely one of the, the main hooks for me as, as well as the, like, the kind of the bond that develops between the two characters. Uh, the story itself, uh, is actually surprisingly good, I think. Uh, the ending has a few different interesting uh, revelations to it. Uh, so I was actually kind of surprised, even though there's a, not a ton of story to this game, but what is there is actually quite intriguing, and I was always interested to see uh, like what was going to come up next, uh, and what more I would learn about this uh, this area I was in, and about like the beast that's been following me this whole, this whole game. Uh, so that kind of ties into the gameplay, uh, you know, being... Uh, like kind of like a puzzle platformer where uh, this beast kind of likes to follow you and there'll be many different points where you're kind of like where you will kind of like rescue each other from like dangerous situations uh, a lot of the game you're kind of exploring these environments and solving fairly simplistic puzzles uh, but some of them are actually kind of obtuse and annoying uh, and that are kind of hard to figure out the game likes to uh, basically uh, trick you a little bit. There's a lot of uh, instances where you'll come to an area and you might see like a chain uh, that kind of uh, will carry you up to a, like a higher level and then it just will end up leading to a dead end. Uh, so you might think that this is where you go, but you're just doing something wrong, but it turns out you actually have to go way back and do something that you missed a few rooms back. Uh, the game tends to throw that kind of shit at you and there's a few puzzles that were so obtuse that I eventually had to just resort to a walkthrough. Uh, one involving water, like it was just one of these things that just did not occur to me whatsoever. Uh, but it was kind of neat when I did uh, realize the solution. And there were a few puzzles that stumped me for a bit, and then when I did eventually figure them out, uh, it felt very fairly satisfying. But other than like kind of simple puzzles, uh, you also have the platforming and. The controls in this game are not great. Uh, this, they, they kind of have, like the animations in this game I think are fantastic. Like the way the boy animates, the way Trico, uh, the beast, uh, animates is, is spectacular. Uh, like really like lifelike. Uh, but unfortunately it's it, the animations are kind of like slow uh, and it kind of makes the controls a little uh, stiff and awkward. Uh, and there's almost, it almost feels like there's even like a delay uh, to your movements and things like that. Uh, for instance, if you're like tackled to the ground by like a, a soldier, like this stone soldier, and you get out of his grasp, uh, you'll kind of fall on the ground and then you'll get up and you'll start like running uh, with like the forward on your, on your analog stick and he'll trip a little bit and then he'll get back into a run. And there's like these little animation things like that uh, that are kind of annoying and irksome sometimes. 
Uh, the running animation is pretty slow, and it takes a while for him to get to a full speed run. So sometimes I, I'll like run and I'll jump before I really should jump, and I'll miss like these jumps and I'll end up dying and have to do them all over again, uh, which can be fairly frustrating. Uh, now, luckily, like as far as like the platforming goes, if you're on like a really high bar or whatever, and you're like tiptoeing across it. Uh, generally, you're not going to really fall off unless you really hold like the, the run button in like uh, the wrong direction and kind of just go off. But if you press like the X button, you'll kind of hang off whatever ledge you're walking across. So there's not going to be too many times where you accidentally run off like a, 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 a super high surface and then just get end up getting yourself killed. Uh, but yeah, the controls are not uh, fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of like weird like kind of things that go on. When you try to climb on Trico sometimes, uh, your character will kind of get stuck at the bottom of him and like sometimes on his tail and yet it takes a while to like position yourself properly. Uh, like little, I don't know, there's all like these little things with the controls that kind of sort of like add up, especially when you combine it with like the frame rate of this game, which on the regular PS4 is honestly pretty bad. Uh, this game is like sub 30 FPS for pretty much the entirety of the game. And that's going to be a deal breaker for some. Like, I know some people that's just, they're not going to be able to get over it, and it's going to be unplayable for them. Uh, for me, uh, frame rate has never been too big of a deal. Like, I was able to get through it, but apparently the PS4 Pro, this game runs a lot better. So, yeah, I, I would be uh, wary of that. Like, if you have a regular PS4, uh, be warned that the frame rate is going to be rough. Uh, there was times where it felt like it was like 5 frames per second. Uh, so you, when, when you combine that with like the slow movement and just like the, the little problems that the controls have and like some of the animations, uh, it can be it can be frustrating. This game, I'm not gonna lie, it can be very frustrating at times. Uh, some of the checkpoints can also be uh, very annoying as well. Uh, they can set you back a far away if you make this like a simple mistake. Uh, the camera in this game is not that great either. Uh, it's okay, it generally does the job, but it's got this weird thing where if you if it gets in too close while you're on Trico, like sometimes it will just get like a pitch black screen, uh, and you kind of have to move the camera around and readjust. And that actually got me killed a few times because I couldn't see where I was, uh, and uh, I, try, I like ended up jumping or moving a little bit, and I just like fell off like a, net, a, a ledge that I was on. So that can be a, a kind of annoying as well. Uh, the game just has some, like, uh, a lot of little issues like that that do sort of add up. Uh, and like I said before, some of the puzzles are really frustrating uh, and not all that fun. And overall, the game in general, it can be boring at times. I'm not going to lie, like, these kind of simple puzzles and just, like, the slow-paced movement. Uh, it's definitely, like, a slower-paced game. Uh, it's not it's not an exciting game. There are moments where it is exciting, Uh like and there's like a lot of really good damage modeling in this game like uh, bridges and like uh, and like statues and parts of the environment will like crumble away sometimes a lot of it due to, due to Trico's weight uh, which is really cool to see uh, I do like how uh, Trico kind of ties in with the platforming itself uh, you know because you have to use them to to do platforming and solve puzzles and I feel like that that kind of adds like this kind of uh, it kind of helps with like the bond that you kind of developed uh, throughout the game. Uh, the moments, you know, when he saves you during a particularly intense platforming section, uh, when things start crumbling away, for instance, uh, they're pretty. They're pretty great moments. Uh, or when Trico gets in trouble uh, sometimes, uh, when the, like these stolen soldier guys like throw spears at him, and you got to kind of get on top of him and remove the spears from him and, and kind of uh, help him out. Like those kind of moments, like when they happened, it was just. I, I felt bad, and I felt like, like, oh shit, I gotta rescue, I gotta rescue him. Uh, now, there are also commands you can kind of issue to Trico. Uh, if you kind of stand on top of him and hold R1, uh, and you can, you can kind of like make him jump, make him go towards a certain uh, direction, uh, basically by tilting the analog stick in a certain way. Now, Trico's AI is both good and bad in a lot of ways, uh, but some of it I think is actually intentional, or at least from what I've heard. Now, he's actually can be fairly stubborn at times, where you might ask him to kind of like jump over a certain gap for you, and it will just take a few a few minutes for him to do it. Uh, maybe not a few minutes, but like, you know, around like t uh, 10 to 30 seconds. Uh, sometimes he just won't listen to you right away. Uh, kind of like a real animal, basically. And I've heard this is actually intentional, but intentional, even with it being intentional, it's, it's not any less frustrating. Uh, it can be very annoying. 
But I found most of the time he did follow my directions fairly well. And a lot of the times I thought it helped to actually just stand on him and let him do his own thing. Uh, in a lot of ways, he'll actually do what you want him to do for the most part. If you're stuck and you can't figure out what you're exactly supposed to be doing, uh, most uh, most of the time he, it will, you might just need Trico to, to cover a large gap for you. And if you just get on him and wait a bit, uh, he'll just immediately start doing things for you. And... Uh, the AI on him is interesting in the sense that he really does feel like this like creature with a mind of its own. And the way it animates, the way Trico animates and behaves, uh, you have to feed him at different parts of the game. Like he'll get hungry and just not want to continue on. Uh, when he fights the the stone soldiers, he gets restless and like kind of riled up, and you have to kind of like settle him down a bit. Uh, there's all these little moments, uh, and when you combine them all with like the bond that develops as you go throughout the game. Uh, it's really effective, and I think it's it especially gets uh, pretty crazy at the end, where uh, uh, some really interesting things happen that I don't really want to spoil. But uh, I will say this game had this profound emotional impact on me. Uh, I got I got uh, a little teary eyed at, at certain points, uh, which honestly, video games almost never make me feel that way. Uh, I felt like equal parts sad and just like I felt like horrible for Trico at sometimes. I felt like uh, like like I felt like uh, happy for him at other times. Like this game, like the uh, the amount of like the uh, like the range of emotions you'll feel throughout this game is is pretty impressive. Maybe it doesn't work for some people, but for me, uh, I'm an animal lover myself. Uh, I, I've grown up with like dogs in the family, and Trico reminds me of a dog in a lot of ways. And so it was it's it's kind of emotional in that way. Uh, now some people might think like the game is kind of cheap. Uh, and, and kind of pulls at your t t heartstrings in kind of like a cheap, uh, unearned way. Uh, but I actually don't feel that way. I feel like this game does earn the emotion, uh, the emotional pull that it does have. Uh, I, I never felt it was it was cheap or anything like that. But uh, yeah, so gameplay, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of weird. I'm like kind of like it in, in a lot of ways, and I don't like it in, in a lot of ways. Uh, but it's definitely uh, definitely a, an experience, that's for sure. And it's, you know, it makes me feel in ways that uh, most games just can't. Uh, off the top of my head, like, Undertale and Mother 3 are, like, the only games that, like, make me feel sad in the way that this game does. Uh, yeah, it, it's actually kind of impressive in that way. Uh, but anyways, uh, visuals. Uh, this game has a pretty good art direction. Like, I like the, uh, the valley, like, the main location of this game. Uh, now, the environment variety itself is not crazy. It's a lot of, like, these stone structures and ruins and caves and things like that. Uh, but I really like just, like, the look of the game in general. It's kind of, got kind of like, this realistic look to it. Uh, but the the character, like, the like Trico looks fantastic. And like I said before, like, the animations on, on the characters in this game, I think, are phenomenal. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, it's not... Like, you can tell in some ways that it was originally a PS3 game... Uh, it's it's not like the best looking PS4 game, and it is it is pretty disappointing that the frame rate is as bad as it is. Uh, but I still think the game looks decent overall. It's not it's definitely nowhere near like one of the best looking PS4 games. But I think the art direction overall kind of carries it a little bit, and the animations in general are some of the best I've seen in a game. And there are some locations towards the end of the game that I thought were just like downright uh, beautiful, basically. Uh, audio, the voice acting, there's not too much of it. Uh, there's really not. It's in Japanese, which which is fine, and I actually like it. I think it's a, it's a Japanese voice acting is a good choice for this game. Uh, the sound effects are really good. Like, Trico's sound effects are fantastic. Uh, the boy's little sound effects, like when he calls out Trico, are, are kind of adorable in, in a way. Uh, I, so I, I do like the sound, the, the sound effects quite a bit. Now, the soundtrack in this game is the best soundtrack I've, hold, I've heard all year. Uh, it is incredible. The only bad thing is that there's just not enough of it. Uh, for a lot of this game, you're just playing in silence. Uh, but when these songs eventually do play, uh, whether it be during a cutscene or very like powerful, impactful moments, like it's like mostly like piano, like this piano score. Uh, but it's beautiful. Like it's absolutely amazing, uh, and it really it's one of the reasons why this game uh, gives me kind of an emotional reaction. Uh, just Trico in general, which I which I love, and then like, that and the combination of like a lot of the different music that plays. Uh, I really wish there was more of it. I definitely want to check out this soundtrack because yeah, every song in this game I heard was like amazing. Like I was just like wow, like this is really fucking good. 
Uh, I think it's the same composer of Shadow of the Colossus and Ico, which apparently had amazing soundtracks as well. So I guess it's no surprise that the soundtrack here is quite good as well. Uh, just, yeah, just wish there was a little more of it. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it with, with The Last Guardian. Uh, I, you know, it's got its issues. It's got its a lot of different gameplay issues, and it's not going to be for everyone. It's really not. Uh, I, I'm kind of surprised myself that I like it. It's, it's usually the type of game that I don't like. Uh, now, it's, it's, it's definitely got its flaws, that's for sure. Uh, if it sounds appealing to you, uh, definitely check it out. It's, it's weird because I know people that have, have enjoyed Shadow of the Colossus and Ico and they hate this game or don't like it, which is kind of weird to me. It's a little odd to me. So I think your mileage may vary. I wish it, could, I wish it was a game I could recommend wholeheartedly to people, but uh, I think you do have to know what you're getting into with like in terms of its gameplay. Uh, and it's, it's definitely going for the more like emotional impact and that kind of bond between the boy and Trico. Uh, gameplay wise, I, I'll, I'll admit it's nothing special, but uh, I, I think some of the moments in this game are, are some of the best like video game moments I, I've I've had basically, uh, and it, it's actually probably ends up still being one of my favorite games of the year. And I really liked how how much of a surprise it was. So yeah, that's the Last Guardian. Uh, pretty honestly impressed with it more than I I, I expected. And honestly, yeah, it, it might just uh, end up on my game of the year list, maybe even high up, but. Uh, yeah, that will do it. I think this is actually going to be my last review for the year as far as like new releases go. It did come out pretty late. Uh, I guess another thing I should mention, the length of the game, it's surprisingly long for the type of game it is. Uh, you would imagine it was it would be like a 6 to 8 hour game, but it's actually like 11 to 12. Uh, it took me, I think, like a little over 11 hours to finish, which is uh, longer than I was expecting. I think maybe a little too long. I would have honestly liked it if it was a few hours shorter, but... Uh, that's no big deal overall. But uh, anyways, that's it, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.